The COVID-19 pandemic had a huge effect on the American labor force. More than 47 million Americans quit their jobs in 2021. More than 50 million quit in 2022. The so-called quit rate finally dipped back to pre-pandemic levels in April of 2023. Now there's another group of Americans leaving their jobs in record numbers, the big bosses. More than 1,500 CEOs have stepped down from their posts this year, according to a report by Challenger Gray and Christmas. We're seeing the highest number of CEO exits that we've recorded over the first 10 months of any year since we started looking at this in 2002. This really is a, a huge exodus of CEOs. The exodus includes some of the biggest companies with CEOs departing from YouTube, BP, Walgreens, and X, formerly known as Twitter. They still think that something bad is happening around the corner. Uncertainty is the killer right now for CEOs. Cert CEOs need to know what the policy is. They need to know where interest rates are going. They need to know the macro environment. And none of that is clear at this moment. The stress from heading a company during the pandemic is now exacerbated with headwinds from rising geopolitical tensions, stubborn inflation, and the lingering possibility of a recession. These trends not only affect CEOs, they can also lead to cost cutting, hiring freezes, and layoffs affecting employees at every level. The pandemic changed the work landscape for everyone. When unforeseen tumultuous times like that occur, many companies like to retain their CEOs to help navigate them through the rough time. When those times end and normalcy returns, CEO turnover becomes more common. I would say there are at least four reasons why we've seen an uptick in CEO turnover over the past few months. Those would be delayed CEO retirement, CEO burnout, concerns about CEO underperformance, and then finally high performing CEOs who are taking this opportunity to level up to a more attractive opportunity. One of the sectors seeing the highest CEO departures is tech which is still being played with massive layoffs across the industry. However, the other is in healthcare, which typically doesn't see significant labor changes in a recession. So there is a lot of change in these industries. Uh, the way we would look at that is healthcare and technology were two areas of the economy that saw huge spikes in demand during COVID. They were on massive hiring sprees. They adjusted their companies to move towards a world that looked like we were in a pandemic. And now that it has receded, uh, they're starting to make lots of changes. They maybe are coming back down to earth a little bit from those pandemic highs of demand. And with that, uh, they're bringing in new CEOs to help deliver. The average cost to replace an employee can range around 1.5 to 2 times their salary, but replacing a CEO is far more costly. CEO pay has been steadily increasing for decades, and in 2022, CEOs of S&P 500 companies commanded a whopping $16.7 million annual paycheck on average. It's definitely a serious expense. It's not just the severance payout uh, to the exiting CEO. It's also the search work that goes into finding a new CEO. Uh, often boards have to get together more regularly. They're bringing in executive search firms that are very expensive. They're going through this whole hiring process uh, that includes the time of all the most uh, expensive leaders within an organization. So the time cost is really serious. And then new CEO pay you know, is always constantly going up you know, with inflation. We're not seeing big dips in that. So uh, all in all, it is a very expensive venture for companies to change their leaders. A CEO's first 100 days are extremely important. CEOs are not only responsible for coming up with plans to satisfy the board and move the company into a more profitable and competitive position, they also need to gauge and address employee needs, which since the pandemic have consistently been flexibility in work. Changes at the top always mean instability for some period of time, uh, particularly for the layer of people reporting directly into the CEO. That's where we tend to see the most change right after a new uh, person is installed in that role because uh, they want to bring in their own people, their own leaders. But regardless, uh, when there's a change at the top, it could mean a, a shakeup in the organization, uh, cost structure changes, which in fact uh, affect uh, entire segments of the company. It can really cut both ways. Employees shouldn't 
panic when a new CEO is named, but neither should they assume that just because the board has an interest in this new CEO, that they as employees have a shared interest. Employees should look at the overall employment value proposition that the organization is offering them and see whether that new CEO vision really aligns with it. Employee confidence matters to the continued success of a CEO. According to research by the University of Washington, it found that when a company does well and has an appetite to take on more risk, the board looks to employee sentiment to gauge a CEO's continued tenure. CEOs never get a second chance to make a first impression. And that's true both with the board of directors, with shareholders and other external stakeholders, but it's also true with the employee base. Employees have a really unique connection to their CEO, even if they're far down in the organization and don't report directly to them. All employees are going to be looking for the CEO to provide a compelling vision for the organization and their role as an employee in that vision. In 2022, 56 S&P 500 companies appointed new CEOs. This new generation of CEOs are younger and bring more diverse experience into their roles as more pressure is placed on companies to take on a stance on divisive social issues. That would include an ability of a CEO to successfully navigate social controversies, speaking confidently but effectively to both internal and external audiences. I would also say that what we're seeing is very much this idea of a new sort of world where generational cohorts are demanding that CEOs sort of build their own brands uh, and come out and talk about purpose and what they stand for. Economic headwinds aside, this trend is expected to remain high. More than half of CEOs only stay in their role for five years or shorter. If the economy has a nice soft landing and we just kind of gently move into a period uh, of more calm, then we we'll probably will see a real reduction in the turnover at this the top of companies. However, if we go into a recession next year uh, and companies start to really have to make quick changes because uh, their companies are struggling in a recessionary environment, that's when we might see another spike in CEO turnover. What CEOs and organizations need in order to manage social and political controversies is strong internal governance, processes in place for determining what issues they are and are not going to speak out about, and then a willingness to over-explain the stances that they do and don't take.